I started engaging with Jeffrey TV a What's few happening, years boys and ago girls? and was captivated Jeffrey by his free spirited streaming of live consciousness. On from the default location, default route. Why is it so loud? Okay, is that better? How would you know? Would you even know if it was better? And didn't I say I was going to stop making those comments while I recorded these videos? Didn't I say that? I could have swore I did. And didn't I say that I was going to stop making the comments about not making comments when I'm making these videos? So now not only am I making comments about the comments I'm not supposed to be making when I'm making these videos, I'm still commenting on it. And now I got commentary on not commenting on the comments that I'm not supposed to be commenting on. With all that being said, coming to you live from the default location, default route. I was thinking today that my routine and my quote unquote normal life, my default life, my default days, my default habits, my basic core routines, not only serve me well, but they keep me healthy. It's when I go off of this, this track or this habitual process that I've created for myself <coughs> for what I call regular life or normal routine life, which really isn't because you actually have to include the weekends in that. Basically, it's my work day. My work day is set up to serve me well, to serve me well, protect me, and to keep me healthy. Just my basic tendencies when I wake up in the morning, right down to where I put my keys, to where I do how I do the dishes, everything has been scrutinized and probably set up for maximum return or maximum impact because yesterday I came in, you know, like I usually do. And in my mind and in my routine, there's only one place I put my keys for years, for years. And even when I go to another place, there's only one place where I take my keys up and my wallet and all that stuff that I carry with me. It's always a designated place to where I keep it. So when I go to look for my keys, they're always in the same place. And like I, this has just been something that I've been doing for years. Even when I went go back to Ohio, when I come in, and it's just a whole ritual thing to picking up the keys and how I carry my keys in my wallet. It's just basic. It's like a standard that goes throughout. So I really don't have to worry about looking for my keys because I'll never put them down. It's almost instinctive or subconscious for me to never put them down somewhere they're not supposed to go. And not supposed to go, quote unquote, is purely subjective, something that I set up. Because as you know, you don't have to do it, nothing. There's nothing that you have to do, uh, uh, only up to the individual. Everything that you have to do or must happen, blah, 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 is determined by the individual for itself. Nobody else can make that, there's no universal, you have to do this, or you got to do that. Like when some people make an argument where they say, well, you got to understand. Nope, I ain't got to do nothing. And I may have to understand to understand the subjective, the subjective point or the process you are trying to present. That's what I have. If I have to do that, it's because it's something that you determine. There is no universal, you have to do anything. And in saying that, I have some things that I set for myself that I have to do. There's just some things I set 
Do I have to? Yeah, I don't have to do nothing, but you know what I mean. There's just some things in my way of thinking and the way I handle myself and the way I carry myself that I put myself in a position to, for whatever reason, to stop recording. Might because I had the uh, remote triggered and the remote probably timed out and that probably caused. Didn't I say I wasn't gonna do this anymore? Didn't I say I was gonna forego all the technical talk and create these things? I just got through saying it. I just got through having a commentary about not saying it and there I go saying it again. What is that, what's that about? Somebody tell me. We know what it's about. It's about me just talking about whatever or articulating or relaying whatever it is that comes to my mind. I was, he was searching for the groove, wouldn't rest for groove. He said, baby, that groove. And that thing that you shake, we don't almost move you. Yeah, that, see? That is when you just, that is when you just want to articulate whatever's in your head. We just want to put into words whatever you're thinking, however you feel, and you can just float on it. My routine, my routine protects and serves me and it keeps me healthy. And when I go off a of routine, it takes a while to get back on it. That lady been walking out here for years in that same place. I don't know what she'd be like on the phone, be like hanging around here. She'd be out here walking. Yeah, I don't think she's homeless. She's been, I've been seeing her for a, a few years. And I probably need to, I guess, look at these videos and try to understand or try to get a good, you know, re fix on how long I've been out here doing this. How many years it's been since I've been out here walking on this particular pathway and going from the current default point A that I go to to the current point B, this, this route. I just, I wonder how long I've been doing this route. And this, you know, just, it, it gets to a point where it's your routine, you just do it. The next thing you look up, hell, I've been living in this apartment for 20 years. <laughs> you know? Like, hell, I've been living in this damn apartment for 20 years. What is that about? And you think, you know, and you, you, you don't consider yourself part of the community. You, you think that you're really, you don't really associate yourself with the city that you live in, that's me. I really don't associate myself with the city that I live in. But having said that, I've been living there for 20 years. So it kind of don't add up. Well, we got too many bike riders out here. I can't stand bike riders being, and here come these old men. They always take it up the whole thing. And he gonna come over here on the walking side. See, watch, see these old men, they like to ride side by side. I'm like, get over that side by side stuff, you know? Move over, stay over. Give us room, six feet. I'm in COVID protocol. I believe in COVID protocol. And that's six feet. That's, what I, that's where I'm coming from. Because in fact, speaking of that, my sister just posted that she got COVID again. This is like her fifth time. <laughs> and she goes through all the precautions and she do this and she do that. And I think it comes down to a lifestyle and habits again. <laughs> Not hers maybe, but mine. To my natural lifestyle to not be all around people 
and my tendency to naturally keep a distance from everything around me probably serves me well because you know she's into you know changing her clothes brushing her teeth washing and clean clothes and you know all the stuff that was a cross contamination she you know about everything that's going on and she'd be like hey eh, you ate that you didn't wash your hands you did all this stuff she wear masks and everything <laughs> <laughs> and she done had COVID like nine times with me. I really can't, you know, say anything because her job, she's a teacher. So she's around people a lot. You know, she's just around you know, other people. Me, I work from home. I'm not around a lot of that. People. I'm naturally in my routine in the basic premise of my life, not hanging around a lot of people considering. Once a week, I go into the office, and believe me, I just I naturally keep a distance. Not that you know I'm cool. You know, we have a good time. We talk. You know, I'm you know I'm Jeffrey. I'm the you know I bring that Jeffrey to the party, even at work. But you know, I, I naturally keep a distance <laughs> and living by myself. You know, there's a tendency to distance. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Did I realize that? And then, oh, then when I come back, see, I go to Ohio. And I know when I go to Ohio what it's going to be like. Because the first, when I went, I got off the, I knew I can't fly. I got to fly on an empty stomach. And my flight was leaving at 934. So I ate early. I ate before I got off work, which I don't usually do. I ate before I got off work so that I had my stomach would be empty. And I flew overnight, landed and got to my daughter's house in Youngstown. I got on the scale and it said 211. That was like the lowest I've been in like a long time. And I knew it was an anomaly weight. I knew my true weight really wasn't that because, you know, when I don't eat, I can't drink or anything. You know, so I was just basically almost starving myself. In fact, on the way in, we stopped by Dunkin' Donuts and I got a breakfast sausage sourdough sandwich to eat, because I knew I'd get to my daughter's house like 6 a.m. or something, like early in the morning. And, you know, eat and go to bed before it got, came home. Cause when it comes home, party time. Tried to get a few hours in before it came home. And granddaughter got there, you know, loaded her up. I got up, did some steps. I think that's how it went. I didn't have to work that Saturday, but you know, I still got up and got my steps. This is my natural routine. I think that's how we did it. And, you know, just to, just to keep the day going and keep her going. You know, keep her occupied. It's better and safer for all of us. But it's at 2.11, you know. And then yesterday, Monday, when I got on the scale, roughly about that same time, in the morning or afterwards, it was like 2.21. I was like, 2.21, what, 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 what? You know, you know, 2.21, I was like up 10 pounds. And I earned that 10 pounds. I earned it. You see me play those people off who talk to me? I just kept talking. <laughs> see, that's what I'm talking about. My natural tendency <laughs> to distance myself and to not engage. I just have, I just have, I'm not gregarious. I like going to the party. I like being the life of the party. I like doing this and doing that. <clears throat> we have meetings or social gatherings. Love them, you know, but when they're done, they're done. Time to go back. Go back to the Jeffrey distancing because more and more and more I'm finding that the conversation within my own head, conversation in which I have total control over the thoughts, intent, 
and, and the energies and my dispositions and all that. Maybe not so much disposition. Disposition may be subconsciously generated. I may not have a control over my disposition. No matter what the meditating kumbaya people try to tell you. Like Sam Harris said, there's no free will because you can't determine what you like. You don't determine what you like and what you don't like. Something that happens before your conscious thought. So you really don't have free will to an extent. You may have an independent will. I just made that up, just thought of that. Your will may be independent of every, everybody and everything else to a degree because of your own personal worldview and consciousness, conscious awareness, and the way you process information from the five senses, five senses into your brain and how your brain takes on that information, reacts to that information, and what your brain does to that information. Seems to be possibly, could be unique, considering how many uh, brain cells or brain nerves or synapses or connections are in the brain. I think the numbers are staggering enough to where you can have billions of people and no two have the same uh, processing scenarios in which two people could see, any two people on the planet could look at the same thing and come up with exactly the same response, determination, reaction, interpretation, blah, 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 blah. What was I talking about? Was I talking about of my, how my routine, oh, it, 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 and when I go back to Ohio and I do this and I do that, like I said, I was 211 when I got there and I knew the party was on. I mean, I knew the party was gonna be on, let's face it, because we had two graduation parties, we had a graduation party, a um, baby shower, it was just food everywhere. It was just food, ridiculous. And plus I'm back there, you know, got my Wedgwood pizza, and, my sparkles market, just the stuff I like to indulge myself. I get off 11 o'clock, looking forward to sitting down with a meal in that recliner, watching my YouTubes, just eating. Oh, so I knew, I knew. And I probably put on about seven or eight, probably, it's probably more like eight pounds. Probably was eight or nine pounds on. And what I want to say about that is when I come back after that, it like takes a week or two for me to get back into my habit. Like right now, even going back into the routine, after work, I still have a tendency to want to eat too much. I still have a tendency to want to eat more than I should or whatever, whatever word. So have a time to eat a little bit more than when I'm solidly back into my routine. It, 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 that could take a couple of weeks or a few weeks. I guess the big thing, main thing about that is when I quit vaping nicotine, when I quit smoking nicotine or vaping nicotine and my appetite and tendency to eat went way off the rails. Way, way, way off the rails. It took months to recover from that. And then once I got a handle on that, to where I could sit down and eat, and not eat to the point of pain, it got to the point I couldn't stop eating. <coughs> I could not stop. Knowing it's gonna make me sick, knowing my stomach is gonna start hurting, knowing I'll probably throw up, and or pass out, I just still couldn't stop. I sit there and I just kept going. I got over that for a few weeks and my, 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 my eating habits settled. 
And then it settled again to where I may or may not have conditioned myself or got to a point or a pattern or a state where I just didn't crave that much eating in the evening after work. It was getting less and less and less. And I felt good. I felt energetic. I had energy, more energy than I had been having in a long time. And because the nicotine taps your energy too. As soon as I got off work, I hit that vape, boom. It's like, oh. You don't get a high, but you get a rush. And I guess that rush just kind of brought me up, be like, oh. And it's not a high to where you're like, oh, you know. It's more like a, huh, okay. Where you just don't, you feel, you really comfortable just sitting there not doing nothing. Or you don't feel like doing nothing, or you just, or more like a tiredness, a weird tiredness. But, you know, once all that, I got over that and got my eating habits, I was, I was getting it. I'd get off work, eat a little something, or I'd even work on stuff. Actually, when I got off work, I just didn't run to eat and get in my chair and watch my YouTube Steeler stuff or, you know. Lately, I've been watching, I like Breaking Points, Breaking Points News. And not because Crystal it's so damn cute. I like the other guy. I like the guys and the way they talk. And I like the way they present the news and their commentary on it. I might even subscribe to them. It's called Breaking Points. But one thing I'll say about Crystal in this, she always got a lot of skin showing. I mean, she's attractive. There's no doubt about it. And she dresses and presents herself as being what I may say is being overly attractive for the role. Because there's another girl on there, blonde girl. Now she's cute, but she dresses in a more news, you know, not so glamorous or attractive role. Crystal always got skin hanging out, her arms out, <laughs> neck, you know, hair down. And every, every now and then Megan Kelly comes out like that. You know, every now and then, Megan Kelly comes out just a little glamorous or casual. But I think, you know, hair, makeup, just a little too flashy or whatever the word is, just to deliver the news to the point it's distracting. And I'm sure they do that on purpose as people probably watch it, you know, just to uh, see it. So, you know, I understand how it all works, or it may work, or sort of works, I guess, because they talk about that website, OnlyFans, and I'm not, I don't know what it is. You know, I, I think I went over there a couple of times to see what's going on. And it's almost about a semi-new sexuality. You know, it's, it's like a sensuality or sexuality of everyday life. Where you see these women, it's, you know, the women who just kind of present themselves <clears throat> in a maybe feminine way or whatever, and just can just watch them, just do Weird, nothing. Just basically watch them do nothing. <clears throat> so, I kind of get that aesthetic. That's what I'm saying. You know, people do like looking at attractive people. And so, yeah, Breaking Points is good. I like to watch them. I do like to watch Breaking Point. And I do like their commentary. The guy, too, Sagar, Serrar. Whatever his name is, I don't know his name. But he's a, I like him too. I like them all. I don't watch CNN no more. How much MSNBC no more. I turn on Fox News just to get their take because I don't even want to hear what the left has to say. It's almost to the point where CNN, I can almost tell you what they're going to say. Their spin is just so anti-Trump. 
that I didn't want to hear it. Now it's true, Fox News is going to be anti-left, but for whatever reason, <clears throat> I'd rather listen to them. For whatever reason, I don't know why, for sure yet, maybe I would want to hear, maybe because so many people in my timeline and so many people quote unquote in my life are left or Democrat or Black Lives Matter or all that stuff. You know, all that stuff. My niece texted me. Yeah, she got, you text her, she texts you a month later. Uh-huh, I'm gonna give her a month. She be like, oh, she busy. You ain't busy enough to text. I don't wanna hear it. She just wants something. And it's okay, I get it. I don't mind people having an agenda. I don't mind people having an agenda. I don't mind people having an agenda, especially children or young people. Always know what you want and don't be afraid to ask for it or go get it. That's my thing, it makes life easier. I don't wanna to have to guess what you need. It's your responsibility to let me know what you want and to be able to accept no when you hear it, when it doesn't happen for you. You gotta be able to ask for it and accept you know, the answers. So that's how that goes, if you ask me. And I don't know if you did ask me or not, but you know what I'm saying. It's about Jeffy TV. It's all about J-E-F-F-E-R-Y. It's all about me. Kind of got distracted there, so I was walking by. You can hear how my words kind of drifted to obliqueness as I just bantered to be talking because I was distracted. But the whole thing being that it's gonna take me a couple few weeks to get back to a more stricter discipline on my eating. Now, this morning I woke up at 2.20. Last night was an office day. Office days, it's usually food. <laughs> but I came home, I didn't eat. I didn't eat when I got home, but I did have my potato chips. <clears throat> I did have my potato chips and I bought home the last gingerbread house that my boss got us at work. My boss got us these gingerbread houses that we're gonna make for like a Christmas team project, you know, team participation thing. And there was one left in the cabinet that I knew it's been there for months and I left it left it left it I didn't want to get it didn't want to touch it didn't want to touch it and then finally I brought it home yesterday ate some of that so I didn't really eat a meal when I got home because I ate enough at work they had Mexican I think tacos or burritos tacos I think it was making like Mexican meat guacamole peppers you know rice and I got a salad so I ate and my pub mix, of course. So I got my calories during the day, got my steps. Came home and said, no, we're not going to eat, eat dinner again. We may have a little something, something. You know, it's a nightcap. And I think that's what I'm, I'm trying to say. That nightcap becomes less and less important or the, the, the draw or the, the necessity or the need for that nightcap gets less and less intense. And before I left <coughs> to go to Ohio, it was like really down low. 
It's like I can get off work and I wasn't eating hardly anything. Well, I take that back, I was eating, but it wasn't like, you know, a hot dog, a hamburger, some linguine salad, potato chips, Cheetos, <laughs> all in one sitting. It was something more mannered, more controlled. I don't know if controlled is the word, I guess because the, because obviously the uh, Cheetos and the cheese puff and the barbecue potato chips was controlled too. Just controlled in a different quantity. <laughs> But, what can I say? And then hopefully we'll get back to it and I'll build a PTO for a few weeks. Just work, keep my head down, go with normal life, get back into that and get that weight down for the next go around. I don't think I got nothing too much planned to like September, nothing in the rest of July and August. Maybe not to the end of September. You know, of course, November, granddaughter's birthday. That's always a thing. And let me see, it's J July, August, September, October, November. So I should actually be going back. If I go every two months like I do, I should actually be going back September, beginning of September, then go back the end of November. July, it's July 8th, July 5th is when I left. So August, September 5th, for a couple weeks. October 5th, November 5th, and it may be a longer spell. I could probably stretch it out a little. Maybe like two and a quarter months, spread it out to get back there. Two month interval, then we'll see September 28th, There's the Funketeers ball. So I might wait till then and go, ooh, go early then. But do I wanna go to the Funketeers ball after two weeks with granddaughter? <laughs> Will I have anything left? Do I need to rejuvenate? Cause actually I could, uh, I could uh, drive. I could probably rent a car, get a car in Youngstown, drive to DC, drive to Bethesda, keep the car and drop it off at the airport and come back to LA. Drop it off at BWI Airport or something. Come back to LA. Would save me a couple trips. I might look into that. I might fly out to say, fly out to Youngstown about September 14th or so. <clears throat> and stay there for a couple weeks. And then Leave that Friday. I like getting there on Friday. I would have to take that Friday off anyway. And I have my PTO, but I have to take that Friday off. So I get up Thursday, get up Friday morning, rent a car, drive to DC, drive to Bethesda, keep the car. And then that weekend, that Sunday morning, Take the car, drop it off at of BWI. I, I just want to see how much that's going to cost. Let me check and see how much that is, something like that it costs. Just to check. And let it save me a couple flights. Save me a couple air flights. Hmm. Let it save me a round trip, basically. Hmm. Got to look into that. And I don't think it, ooh, and there might be some games going on back then. Might be able to go see the Steelers. 
at home or something. Uh, see, I like doing all that. That's fun to me. I enjoy strategizing like that. But anyway, the whole thing is, so to about September 15th, so through July and August, hopefully I can lay low, watch my eating. Now, I gotta spend some time at an undisclosed location, and that tends to push me to eating. It's not, it's not easy. <laughs> Man, I, I gotta spend some time at an undisclosed location, and maybe I can get a, get into a trend or get my weight down before I start that. Because I'm gonna be out there from like the 22nd to the 4th. It's a long time. And I tend to eat differently, more, give myself more leeway to eat more, give myself permission to consume more. Yeah, I'm thinking about my niece all texting me, cause she, <coughs> I told her I fly, if she go to New York, I tell her I pay for her. But she can't go with her mother, she gotta go like, by herself or with her friends or something. So I pay for you to go to New York and all of a sudden, I guess that's starting to work out for her. But then again, she did just get back from Dominican Republic the other day. Yeah, so I might give her some leeway. She's a good kid, but I don't get nobody no credit. You know, I don't get nobody. I give them the benefit of the doubt, I guess. But, you know, everybody's evaluated on their current performance. <laughs> I don't give nobody no break. You know, you gotta come correct every single time. And I guess she did just get back from the Dominican Republic. So, that could be her excuse for not texting me back or whatever. Anyway. My nasals are starting to have a little bit of pain and tension. Not a lot, just a little. I wonder if that's tied to the barometer or to whatever. But today's just a little bit. It don't look like ain't no rain, no rain or nothing. But I bet you if I look, I bet you, I bet you if I look, something's on its way. I bet you. In fact, I'm gonna do it. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't feel like I don't want to. I don't want to tempt messing up this recording. I'm just gonna finish this up right now. I think I've talked enough. Talked about 40 minutes. Is that enough for y'all? Y'all get enough? Did y'all get enough of Jeffy TV? Did y'all get enough of Jeffrey on Jeffy TV? See, I walk like this. Or should I just walk normal with my head down? I'm so used to walking, you know, looking up like this. I could just walk like that. See, some things you just don't realize until you realize, you know, and that's, that's one of them, I guess. Anyhow, swing on y'all two times. For me, for the phone. And for every elementary particle that has ever existed in any atom, in this or in any universe, it ever was, is, or will be. A totality of it all, theory of universe. Hypothesis of all as one. My name is Jeffrey.